I'd like to call the regularly scheduled Board of Selectmen meeting for Monday, September 17th, 2018 to order. Our first order of business is Pledge of Allegiance. Charlie, please lead us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, item two, public forum. Anyone wishing to address the board in public forum on any item on the agenda? Uh, seeing none, let's move on to item three, uh, approve minutes. And that would be the 3.1, the September 4th, 2018 minutes. Um, did anybody have anything? No, to approve uh, the minutes. Uh, I, I had one. Um, and it's just an addition. Uh, it's on page three under section uh, five. Uh, Health Director 5.1. Um, I believe I added something at the end that, in, that said uh, that I indicated uh, that the architectural firm, um, uh, or not, you know, the archaeological firm, uh, was going to be hired as a subcontractor to Wright Pierce. You definitely said that. Okay. So if we could add that in, please. That's all I have. Yes, that's paper. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Wait a second, still holds with that change or whatever. Yeah, we'll go with that, uh, with that change. Uh, and this is a motion to approve? Yes. And a second. Call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Recusals? Hearing none. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, item four Finance Director, Mary Jane Malvesi. Good morning, Mary Jane. Good morning. How are you today? Just fine after a lovely weekend. There you go. Yes, it was actually. Report out one, receive a monthly report from the finance director. I suppose we'll start with expenses since it's the first thing that comes up. Okay. Uh, so I just wanted to note that the the budget, uh, you'll see a new line item, 00110 engineering on both the revenue and the expenditure side uh, with the change. Uh, in the engineering public works area with two department heads. We have split those expenses and revenues out uh, to reflect uh, to the best of our ability at this time what that split would be. That was done with um, both the, uh, our new engineer and our uh, public works director, so um, everybody was in agreement so far. Uh, as, as we move forward, so they will be separately managing those budgets, I believe. Uh, it, it's as it was back in 2012-2013 uh, uh, before they were combined. combined. So yeah. we've kind of gone back uh, to, to how it was. So there's no change in the <coughs> overall bottom line budget on, on either side. Uh, it's just the allocation between the two. Mm -hmm. can, can that be done since the original budget was voted on? Yes. Yeah. yes. Under what authority? How does that work? Um, it's the same it's line. Just, it's just, just the, it's just the, an accounting of the of the two lines. There's no change to line items, just splitting them out. So, mm -hmm. no no change. So collectively, that that mm -hmm. budget the department is going to have the same monies available Correct. to it. Correct. Okay. But there are two departments, whereas only one was Correct. voted on. Right. Correct. Okay. Um, did that mean you changed all the account codes, or was that the old one left over from? They were all still there. Yeah, yeah. that's what I thought. Yeah. Okay, the old engineering one. Yeah. And Tom, congratulations on uh, alleviating yourself of the engineering <laughs> part of the budget. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, other than that, uh, what we're looking at is at the end of August. Uh, at at this point, approximately 17 percent through the year. Uh, we are, as you can see, over budget. Um, in the debt retirement principal, and that's because we allocate money in from some of our premiums. <coughs> so part of my agenda today is to approve the transfer of that money to make that line item whole. Um, so uh, nothing else that really uh, jumps, out on jumps out. So I, I didn't have anything else to report unless you have any questions. Oh, good. Anyone else? No. Money expenses? Mm -hmm. No. Revenue? Uh, so um, on the revenue side, uh, 
the only thing I wanted to, to bring to your attention um, is the tax collector line. I do have a little note at, at the bottom. Um, because of staffing, the short one full-time person in the um, tax office, we are behind having the uh, postings done into Munis, although all the deposits are in the bank. Uh -huh. this, it's just a posting difference. Okay. Are we uh, comfortable with the level of deposit? In other words, yeah. what would the percentage be if uh, the accounting were accurate? It, it would be about 49.9% um, based on the number I received from the tax collector as to where she, where she was. So a little bit um, shy of last year's, um, but right at that 50% number, right. then that's right. the number we look for. Mm -hmm. So, um, and we just did a round of interviews, so hopefully we can get that office staffed and Back up back to full compliment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. Great. I mean, it's too early to, to call anything, but are we okay with uh, slower income, or do we think it still might be a little residual from the tax law last year? Or is it just um, it no red flag anywhere around too fifty percent is yeah. is always right where you're looking, yeah. right where you're looking to be. It's a little little early at this point. Okay. Anything further on Ronis? No, no, no. Good bad explanation. Uh, anything on warrants? Anybody? We'll leave that to the Board of Finance tonight. I'm sure that was enough questions. Uh, medical. Any questions? Uh, big month in August on claims. Uh, we, mm -hmm. we, we did. Um, I do have, I, I did send an, an email to. Um, our consultants to, to see if there was any reason for that. It was uh, extreme. I, I do know that um, Anthem is changing, was changing over their software, so we've been behind getting reporting, so, uh, I, and I don't know if that had anything to do with it or if it's a carryover for some things from the, from the su summer that just didn't get on, um, but it, it was more more than the delta I usually look for yeah. from one month to the next. So, because um, uh, I have not, uh, unless an email came in over the weekend that I didn't see, I don't have an answer for why that was so high. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping to get one because okay. I, I questioned it immediately. Sure. So, and it looks if we do continue at that rate oh, for the year, absolutely. we will have a deficit for the year a of half a million. A absolutely. Yeah. So I'm I'm hoping there's some significant reason for, mm -hmm. for that. You know, we, we were um, very low throughout last year, so it's possible that there was Just one a, big one chunk catch up, mm -hmm. or, or sometimes what happens, I think I've explained in the past, you know, we have a catastrophic claim uh, maybe with a, a, a woman and a child that once they split off, you know, mm -hmm. I, and I'm not saying that's what it is, it but is there, are, the there are often answers to why that happens, I'm trying to get the answers for that. Mm -hmm. So hopefully by, by next month I would have an, an answer for that. But that's, that's the reason it's important to have a healthy balance in that right. fund, because Correct. we can take just one thing to Correct. Make that's, all the you know, difference. a $500,000 difference. Yeah. You know, I, I, I could see if it was at that, I, you know, 100000 plus or minus mm -hmm. is explained, you know, yeah. but this was a little bit Mm -hmm. Out of the norm, mm -hmm. which is why I'm asking the questions. Yeah. So yeah. it okay. may or may not be the the trend. I'm hoping it's not the trend, but I'm hoping to have that answer. Yeah. So. Thank you. Uh, our uh, the num I, I hope you you know brought up new documents. The first document I sent did not have the updated IBNR um, as of <coughs> the end of the year, and then. Of course, it always happens immediately after we submit a document, we get the answers. Uh, so Tracy did um, upload the new document. Our, our new I, uh, IBNR is, is 1,033,000, and so the new uh, report would reflect that at the bottom. Any other questions okay. on that? I think we're good. Thank you. Anybody else? Fine. Thanks. Good. All right. Item 4.2, discuss and take possible action recommend to the Board of Finance transfers from unassigned fund balance and or medical benefits. 
Um, this uh, should not come as any surprise. Uh, we've been discussing mm -hmm. this for some time, um, and Mary Jane and I have uh, uh, pulled together um, a couple of things. But anyway, um, but okay, I'm sorry. We're, okay. we're I'm ahead of myself it's at right. this point. Um, Mary Jane, go ahead. Uh, so the first item um, is the one I already mentioned. It's the amount that we had budgeted from uh, assigned fund balance that has already been set aside from our premiums. So this is just a transfer, bringing that money uh, in from fund balance to make that line item whole since all of our principal payments for the year have already been met. And you wait and do the interest piece later because Correct. we haven't we've only made half the payments. Correct, yeah. It's not over right now. And uh, just in case there's any other, you know, differences mm -hmm. in, in the amount. Mm -hmm. We do estimate our first interest payment for any new debt. Sometimes that's higher or lower. Mm -hmm. So I, I'd rather Just not wait. make that transfer now. Sure. The line isn't <coughs> over yet. Mm -hmm. um, so at that time, we'll come back to you a second uh, for that. Yeah, Mary Jane, we're looking at this, and we all follow what you're saying. But basically, you're talking about bond premiums as a result of the financing mm -hmm. at the high school, right? Uh, yeah, or all of all, all of our bonding. all of our bonding. When we okay. go out to bond, um, based on a lot of factors, some the, the people buying our bonds pay us more uh, than the bonds. Uh, are, are valued at. That's called the bond premium. That money we, instead of using it um, within those projects, we set that aside for future use uh, so that we can mitigate that mill rate <coughs> bump mm -hmm. uh, when we go through the budget uh, process and, and, I, and I show those graphs with, with the budget and, and the mill rates. These premiums help keep those bumps lower uh, and it, uh, instead of asking for more tax money uh, to pay those. We use this as an offset. So, okay. And in point in fact, uh, the most recent bond sale we had in August resulted in premiums of what, uh, nearly 400000 yeah, Almost 400000 Almost 400000 mm -hmm. as well, and that was on the $12 million, uh, um, $12 million uh, bonds and mm -hmm. a $3 million uh, short-term notes. So. Correct. So. Okay. All right. So, is there a motion to approve the transfer? Uh, um, Four hundred thousand um, dollars from fund balance assigned to uh, GHS uh, uh, financing. Yes, so moved. Second. Any further discussion? Call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Recusals? Motion carries. Um, next one. Um, Mary Jane, you want to go ahead? Uh, sure. As we've been discussing for a, a number of months, but specifically last month, I had come to you with an estimate of where our fund balance may be at year end. Uh, if you remember, that mm -hmm. spreadsheet did show where where we might be and where we came in the last few years. Uh, and choosing 2016 as the last time uh, that number was under 10 percent. Uh, using that 9.1% as the baseline, uh, we estimate that we could have $1.3 million available to us, uh, the difference between the 9.1 and the 10.5, which is where we estimate to be. Uh, we have talked about a number of uses of that, uh, of that <coughs> money. We are at this point recommending three. Uh, the first one being committed to technology, $150,000. We, we have been making uh, large advances um, in our technology, making sure that um, all of our systems are up to date, currently working uh, uh, with a vendor to make sure that our hardware and our main uh, servers are, are up to date and uh, providing uh, redundancy. So if you remember, we were down for about a week um, when we had a problem with our servers. So uh, although we, we can be down for a short amount of time, uh, a week is a long time for us to, to be out. So we are uh, working to um, hopefully alleviate that in, in the future. Uh, and like I said, working with a vendor um, at this point so we, we would have a use for um, the money we've already set aside. And, and moving forward with that and uh, as Town Hall South, possibly with some changes or updates or trainings or whatever. So yeah. we have a lot of uh, technology, technology needs, needs that mm -hmm. we really um, 
just for us to stay afloat. You know, you mm -hmm. know, we we haven't um, put in the amount of money maybe we should have over the last few years, and we're hoping right. to to change that. It, it, it was clear to me we've been woefully underfunding uh, technology mm -hmm. for a number of years. We're running versions of software that are 2003. Um, Office 2003, uh, which is uh, which is absolutely absurd, um, and we're also going to be shortly uh, running up against the lack of support from uh, the vendors because uh, they will no longer support those versions. And the other um, concern of running old programs, especially, is security. You know, security. security. Mm -hmm. I agree. Just, yeah. There's too much information. That's at risk. I agree. With you. So we, as as Mary Jane has said, uh, this is really uh, to address a couple of things. One, the anticipated changes that are going to need to take place uh, uh, over Town Hall South in terms of uh, some of the permitting uh, modules, uh, whether it's training or it's uh, um, it's writing uh, interfaces or. Uh, um, revising the way we have uh, designed those systems. Additionally, we're looking at VOC, uh, which is our uh, emergency management platform, but it is also the day-to-day -day, um, work order uh, and task um, um, processing workflow that's used by the fire department. So there are a significant number of places where we may be able to use that. In fact, uh, I think uh, Kevin, you're working with, uh, um, with uh, Mike Shove as we speak. Uh, on an application uh, to streamline uh, the track like tree removals, hazardous trees, right. where they fall in the process of being removed and identified. Right. So okay. it, we're you, looking at, in just in IT, we're looking to use the VOG as a work order right. system. So instead of calling Tony, you know, three times a day to see if he's gotten, you know, if you've reached mm -hmm. the level that he's been able to get it, we're using the VOG system. We can right. put in a work order. Not only does it help um, our staff. Right prioritize those issues. It helps the user to be able to go back in and see where their issue stands. Um, it, it, it's a monetary <coughs> decision because everybody would need to be on the VOC system, so we're working with them to try to uh, get the best uh, price we can. Uh, uh, but again, there's a lot of a lot of things we want to put into place in so VOC. You first used that system during all of the storms, Sandy, exactly. in the previous administration. Yep. And that was the first time that just the fire department, but we used it in that emergency circumstance. And it was very effective. It was remarkably effective. Right. Just, just their vehicle maintenance. Uh, you know, Tom may want to look at what they do for vehicle maintenance. Right. You know, one of the guys can be out on a, on a call at 3 a.m. and, and put something in, you know, that they're having and an they're issue, felt. and it, it's there for, <coughs> who, you know, whoever Forever, can see it. until it gets and, better. Yeah, and uh, it, it just really uh, works very well for, very for those types too, of applications. Very intuitive, too. You know, literally, like you said, mm -hmm. somebody could be in the field, have an issue, plug it into their phone, Correct. and put it out of their mind and go about their business, because right. it's in there, and then somebody's got to look at it, obviously, and get right. it. Right, so, so the cost, the... the, the it's not huge cost, but there is a cost, right. you know, for, for everyone um, in, that works for the town of Guilford to have access to this, you know, could ha has lots of uses. Um, like I said, in public works, just in IT, <coughs> it, it can even be used for payroll, and that's how people do their timesheets instead of paper. So there's a lot of applications. It's not this expense just gets us one thing. Right. That expense could has the potential of streamlining many areas of how we work. I also don't want to mislead folks to thinking this $150,000 is going to buy everything we need, okay? <laughs> right. uh, yeah. th this is somewhat, this is chipping away. This, this, is, away. this is chipping away. As, mm -hmm. as Mary Jane said, we have money in, we have a reserve. We have about we 50, already have we, this reserve. We have, we have about fifty or $60,000 left, left from the previous mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. you know, um, but we're looking at a proposal um, from a vendor, state approved vendor that we've been working with uh, to upgrade all the uh, servers and, and create the uh, redundancy uh, and resiliency that we actually need. <coughs> Excuse me, <clears throat> and that number is about a hundred sixty thousand dollar project over time. Uh, so, uh, but some of the money that we had allocated in the current operating budget uh, will be offset uh, as a result of that uh, spending that one hundred sixty thousand right, dollars. I think is we had budgeted 50. for upgrade to some of our servers, mm -hmm. if you remember. Right. So um, instead <clears throat> of doing that piecemeal, uh, like we have, right. we're going to yeah. we're going to allocate right. that money in our capital <clears throat> towards this project because it, it it's 
meets the same goal, just doing it in a more comprehensive way. Yeah. So just for that piece, there's 160,000 that we, we're going to need. Um, but if you take the 150,000 that we're asking for the transfer today, plus the 60 that's already in the, in the account, that's 210, and the 50 or so in the current operating budget. Mm -hmm. uh, so that gives us 260. So uh, we'll still have about $100,000 left. <coughs> Excuse <Yeah>. me. <coughs> Joking on something, uh, so we'll still have about a hundred thousand uh, dollars left to start with some of these other projects, mm -hmm. and of course, budget season is around the corner, and uh, hopefully, we'll have a, a better handle on where we need to go uh, mm -hmm. at that point. So, so the alternative to spending this money from this source would be to just find money and capital in the next in the upcoming budget, uh, or not do it. To not do it, it's which but it would also it would also create a window. Uh, that, that money would be available to us until next July. Right. And we cannot, uh, so we can't a, wait. There's a timing economy. Yeah. There and there's a savings, an operational savings potentially. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, I had sort of a technical question as to the, the OC specifically, but Charlie was talking about it gives the opportunity for town employees to, you know, call in from remotely find a problem and identify it and basically get it on a list to, to address, right? It's so, like a work order system. Sure, yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. Is there any uh, ability or thought of having um, people, citizens, be able to sort of just comment remotely? Not necessarily with this, but I mean, so we like, already have here's it. a problem. So how does, we have potholes online, for instance, we perfect have an example. Here's a problem. Are, are, are ready. Yeah. On the, on the town website, there's, okay. a, there's a portal. You can go so in and register your complaint. You pick by department, um, which uh, department you think it falls into. Very often it winds up in a wrong one. Brian winds up with <laughs> potholes. Uh, <somebody laughs> not, not sure how he gets those, but, uh, but there is it. And, so, and those sure. emails are forwarded to the department, uh, to, to the respective departments. That's good to know. Okay. Good. Yeah. good. I didn't know that. Very good. It's not quite as sophisticated as C Click Fix, which is yeah. the application. Uh, New Haven uses, um, mm -hmm. which is uh, farm works, uh, extensive and expensive. So, but the ability is already there. Okay. Using this money this way is a, this has been said before, but it doesn't hurt <coughs> to repeat it that this is money that you know we want to keep a healthy unassigned fund balance, but we want to be able to um, take some of the money that we've already collected in taxes and fees and give put it back into worthy projects without trying to look for new sources of yeah. funds. Yeah. Yeah. Further burdening the tax credit. Right. Agreed. It's it, the it, money to work, too. Yeah. Right. I mean, yes. it, it, yeah. And let's not forget, this is taxpayer money. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's already been, already been collected, right. and assessed and collected from them. So, But it's a good point. Very good point. Uh, the second one uh, is the uh, uh, transportation plan, uh, and I'll cover this one if yep. you don't mind. Um, as we've all We've discussed ad infinitum over time. This is the, the redo, the remake of the transportation plan of 2002, a reaction to the Nut Plains Pathway, uh, the Shoreline Greenway Trail, and the five petitions we had for sidewalks. Um, I, I, I'm still sitting on a roster of about 15 folks who are willing to participate, <laughs> and actually 16 because somebody asked me last week if they you know, could still get involved. Um, and uh, we are 95% done with the charge of the committee. Um, but uh, this is to allow for three things. One, uh, if the committee decides that a facilitator is, uh, is required for, uh, uh, for this committee, because it's going to be large and it's going to have a pretty wide charge. Uh, secondly, uh, uh, the use of uh, consultants, engineering or uh, traffic shaping or those kind of consultants, uh, which may not be uh, available uh, among the committee members. Um, uh, and then uh, lastly, uh, money for a demonstration project where we could actually kick off and do a sidewalk uh, or a pathway or something uh, so that it'd be, um, you know, they, they, this committee could actually accomplish something uh, and, and get something done. So, uh, and we've assigned about 350000 to that account. Now, again, we're, we're we're, we're moving these from one uh, unassigned to an assigned account. So if we don't use all the money, that money still stays in our fund balance. It actually stays in our fund it, balance. It's still our fund still, balance. Still, right. still in our fund mm -hmm. balance. Mm -hmm. We're just allocating it for a specific use. Uh, <coughs> and then lastly. And I'll, well, I'll just add on to that. Um, because it is allocated for a specific use, we cannot use it without coming back to you yeah. mm -hmm. and, the and the Board of Finance. Board of finance. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you're putting money away and all of a sudden I have a checkbook. That you know that that we can go out and spend. Um, you will know every time 
you know, we have a request to use that, exactly. that money. And in the same way we came to you with the land, the, um, land use yeah. project right. and um, that was approved from this money you know from the money okay. so. so what's the oversight of the three hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars in the trans the transportation committee has just authority to spend it or no, they have to come back no, to us. They, they, they would have to they would have to <coughs> you know come with a request a recommendation. for X you know for, for something um, mm -hmm. for the, to have the ability to move this money into a budget where they would have they, so they make the recommendations and we oversee and they might have to go through a, a big process if it was uh, mm -hmm. they would have to follow all, all of the our normal things that we correct yeah. but um, they can only request the use of that money um, it would need to be approved once that money is approved for that use then they would have uh, the ability to spend it like like any other department on on what they've asked for all right, the last one is a $50,000 allocation to, uh, for a facilities task force. It's another issue we've talked about for some, uh, occasionally. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, uh, Gary McKelney has volunteered to, uh, uh, to, to head up a facilities task force committee, uh, so we'll be uh, um, actively looking for uh, additional participants in that. Um, I'll give you an example of the immediate need. Um, we have <coughs> a challenge down at Public Works right now. Uh, Park and Rec uh, has their, uh, their their maintenance crew is in one of the in section one of the bays. Mm -hmm. uh, already they need they need probably six more bays to uh, to house uh, equipment and, and vehicle vehicles, uh, with many of which <coughs> have to stay outside all winter long. Uh, rubber gaskets freeze, they break, mm -hmm. those kind of things. Uh, also, the uh, um, uh, the foreman uh, um, has an office in one of the garage bays. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the crew has their break table and lunch table in that same large bay without restroom facilities. Do you remember the pictures mm -hmm. of yeah. that mm -hmm. the sink? Yeah. 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 Well, now they got the building next to the Park and Rec building, too. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of. Right. And I'm really glad that Gary's uh, going to stay involved because right. he was very aware of that kind of stuff, stuff. during his last cycle. Yeah, he had, unfortunately, he had said, I'd be happy to help you with something, so I, I took him up. He missed the meeting, right. we got him. And, um, and, and, and Gary has already reached out to, I think many of you know, John Ireland, uh, mm -hmm. who uh, in a previous uh, career actually did facilities planning for major universities, uh, I think as part, that was his business for a long time. And he, he said you should allocate up to uh, $50,000 for uh for a consultant uh, for, uh, to, to use with the facilities task force. Mm -hmm. That's perfect bipartisan effort. That, that's good. Yeah. That, those are two good key two, individuals. Yep, two good guys. Mm -hmm. So those are the three requests. Um, and we can take them as one. We want to vote on them individually. Does it matter? I um, vote on them all together. Yeah. All together? Yeah. Is that a motion? Yeah, I'd make, I'd make that motion. <laughs> <laughs> Any further questions? No. Call the question all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Staying recusals. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, these have been important items for me uh, throughout the, the, can you believe it's nine months since we start, since this board good started initiative. together? That's good. Yeah. Um, now, just for, you know, we, have, we still have to go to the Board of Finance. It's not done yet. Board of Finance has to approve this as well this evening, and that would be my plan. So. Okay. Very good. Mary Jane, thank you very thank much. You. Item five, Public Works Director. Tom Fillion. <laughs> The guy with his own budget now. <laughs> oh, yeah. It takes a long time. Yeah. All right. Uh, 5.1 is uh, discuss and take possible action on the award of a uh, six wheel dump truck snow removal package. I understand um, that's, that's going to be tabled. That's been tabled. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, with respect to our commission, they need more information. Gotcha. So. Okay. So 5.2 uh, consider and take possible action on the increase in cost of chip sealing. All right. We just finished up 6.8 miles of road chip sailing. We actually stay below the original 98,041 square yards by uh, 3,450 square yards. Okay. That's reflective of how the gutters are, <coughs> the shoulders of the road, they're not, our roads are not perfect in these areas. Yeah. So we ended up saving money there. But uh, one thing that was not figured into the original purchase order was the oil escalation charge, which is an unknown, right. and that became uh, 20 cents per yard charge. Oof. So with the savings of not going to the 98 uh, 
041 on the square yards, mm -hmm. we ended up uh, with an overage of $16,428.52, okay. which is a supplemental I need, but will come out of out our of summer operating. road maintenance. Summer road maintenance. Good. Okay. Um, Seems clear enough. Yep. It does. Uh, Mayor Jane, what do we have to do? <coughs> approve uh, approve movement of line items, or are you going to do that? No, he's got money in this. Sense. You don't, you have money. There's no change I, I to the line items. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's just an approval of the additional funds. That's right. Okay. All right, so is there a motion to approve the additional funds of $16,428.52 uh, for the uh, the uh, overage in the chip ceiling costs? I'll move it, but I With have a question. question. I'll second. second. Sure, sure. Second. In light of the increased costs for chip ceiling, mm -hmm. well, actually, my question is, you know, I, I just want to make sure chip ceiling was still a viable alternative to paving, obviously, but the oil would be effective paving also. Exactly, yes. So that affects across the yeah, board on the wall. wall. Okay. Right. And are there any alternatives to explore? You, you know, you hear about you know, some environmental asphalt and that kind of stuff. There's other things, cold paving, mm -hmm. but still has an emulsifier in it, so yeah, you're going to be dealing with the oil anyways. So okay. no matter which way you look at it, the, it all depends on the roads that we're looking at as far as they're going to be segmented, the roads as far as what, what they need a total reclaim or if they, they can do an overlay. But again, that's what the, where the cost comes. This is the cheapest cost to maintain a road. Okay. We're going to have to really uh, take a hard look at that budget cycle. You know. mm -hmm. I mean, the 20 cents is the escalation, the yes. over and above. Well, it's not. Mm -hmm. yeah. But could that go down again? I mean, is that yes, something it, yes, that can. can go up it's and down, like all fuel things? Right. Like Last year, it was a lot cheaper than it was this year. And then right towards the end, that's where Brian, uh, Brandon came to me from New England and told me that, Tom, there's going to be a good jump at the time that we happen to do it. And the best time of year to do it is in August. When things do, you know, everything's nice and, and there's no way to prepay and lock in or any of those kinds no, of things. No, they, I don't think they'll do that, no. Because their cost is going to go up. Okay. Yeah, but they're buying futures, though, more than likely. Um, the big, the big Well, players. it really is. We, we like you said, it's a timing it cash a timing flow thing. issue. Right. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Something we got to take a look at next time. Okay. Right. Just like, any other questions? No. We have a motion on the table. Call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Recusals? Hearing none. Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Yep. Thank you. Now we missed medical funds. Right? Oh, I'm sorry. We did. That, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to take it now? Or yeah. Let's do it now. Let's let's uh, bring Mary Jane back. Thank you very much. I missed you guys. <laughs> so. Ah. We, we missed an item. We're right. so okay. caught up in all of those other transfers right. that um, we missed uh, my final memo. Let, let, let me set the stage on this for, uh, for a minute. Um, at last month's Board of uh, Finance meeting, um, there was a hearty discussion about uh, the use of the medical uh, fund account. We've had the discussion here as well. The Board of Education at uh, its May meeting, I believe it was, uh, determined that uh, they were not going to make their last medical payment, uh, which was about $900,000. Instead, they moved the money directly to the pension account. Uh, because of the shortage that, uh, that, that has been identified in the uh, pension account. That is a substantial boost. That's a, that's a big help for them. Um, so we had the discussions about uh, moving forward, um, the three, uh, three main boards talking about those kind of decisions because it is a joint shared program uh, on the, on the health care for both the uh, town and the Board of Education uh, uh, employees. So um, we left the Board of Finance meeting um, on uh, on, on last month suggesting that the, the town would like to have the opportunity to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, which w Now, obviously we've already made the transfer um, of the, our, our payment is about 200000 a month, approximately, approximately 200000 a month. Um, so we would like to have the opportunity to do that and offset some longer term uh, uh, employee benefits. Uh, similar to what the Board of Education did. So that's the genesis mm -hmm. of this is, um, and Mary Jane, you want to talk a little bit about the OPEB, uh, just for people in the viewing audience? Uh, 
Uh, sure, and um, I spoke a little bit about this, so it should not um, come as a surprise to all of you. Um, the OPEB, which is the other post-employee benefits, meaning as our employees retire through their contracts, they are allowed to um, use, continue to use our health benefits, some si sometimes subsidized by the town, sometimes not, right. depending on contracts. Mm -hmm. All the contracts have some provision uh, in, in, in them for, for this. Uh, so we currently pay as we go. So year over year, you know, the employees, um, the, the retirees reimburse for some of their uh, health benefits. The town covers the amount by contract that we're allowed to do that. Um, and we've been doing this, um, you know, for a long, a long time. It's not something, any, anything new. What's new is we now report this in our financial statements. So it is yeah. out there in front of us. We now know what that number is. Five years ago, we probably didn't know, you know, what our liability over time uh, is. So if you were to look at your, um, uh, I, I wrote 630 ATM, sorry, that's a typo. It's the 17 audit. Um, the 17 audit had an obligation of just over six million for the town and the board of board of ed, uh, that number fluctuates. Um, last year it was uh, a little bit more. It, it, it's got, it fluctuates over time. It, it kind of levels out um, because we are looking at it now as evaluation over you know twenty years. I I, I think so. Um, but ultimately we do we will owe this money at some time in the same way we have pension obligations. And many cities and towns are now um, setting money aside for this liability, showing it on their balance sheets Jeez. that they have this, um, and putting money aside uh, either through reserve funds or actually um, <coughs> initiating a trust fund, trust. Um, just, just like um, pension fund, which uh, I, I think ultimately should be something we explore and, and look into um, so we could do that. In the meantime, uh, I'm looking for uh, the the opportunity of the funds and the medical uh, benefit fund to start this uh, because it's it's medical it you know it has a, it's, it's the mm -hmm. same mm -hmm. benefit um, it's just benefiting our retirees as opposed to the people who are currently in it um, so I thought it was a valid use uh, of this money um, and so we're looking to take that two hundred dollars to begin this. Um, OPEB fund balance. It, it's going to be in the. It would be in the fund balance the same way the other three items we just discussed, mm -hmm. just coming from a different pot of money. Mm -hmm. And just one thing, um, as you've seen in the most recent negotiations, we are not extending mm -hmm. OPEB benefits uh, to, in future contracts. That mm -hmm. has been our position for some mm -hmm. time. That those there are those that <coughs> currently have those benefits that we need to take care of. Uh, however, uh, we've been uh, careful about uh, bringing them down, bringing them down you know. or and mm -hmm. Mitch is nodding his head mm -hmm. back there. So, uh, yeah. so, so we don't we, we don't see it as ex then. right. Exactly. That's why we don't we do have responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, right. absolutely, and that's a fairly substantial dollar amount. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of, of course, some of that um, is uh, reimbursed to us from the retiree. Like I said, they. Many of the contracts have an offset, right. so this liability includes the money we would get from them. So it's right. not the town yep. writing a check at this point mm -hmm. for the six million, um, mm -hmm. but a substantial amount of that is the town's. Right. And, and if you create a trust fund out mm -hmm. of that, um, the revenue in that trust would go dedicated to, to that, that trust. purpose. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. and same, it would be exactly as our, pension. our pension right. trust is set. Right. I won't say, maybe I shouldn't say exactly, that's probably a little extreme. Conceptual. But <laughs> Co comparable to Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Right. Does so the it, pension committee manage, will the pension committee manage that trust? Yeah. They, they, they could. I mean, we, we'd have to change that charge, charge you know, yeah. to, to do that or have a separate committee, but oh. it would be set up. Well, to, it that's it just said, to, you know, they, They've been doing pretty good with their return. Yeah. Not saying that the finance department hasn't, but I mean, oh, maybe okay. we have other opportunities. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I tell employees here how fortunate they are to have the level of expertise on the pension committee that they do because they I really. I mean, if it's going to be a trust and it's yeah. money that's going to be right. there, it might as well be managed as well as it can be. Yeah. Right. So that that's you know, 
the next the next step. Next uh, I don't okay. have that put together. I'm just trying to um, set it aside start. first. Yes, yeah. get get a start. I did speak mm -hmm. to our auditors um, about the appropriateness of this. At you know 100 percent, they were um, okay with this, and ultimately moving to a trust fund obviously mm -hmm. um, would would be fine as well. I think it would be beneficial to the town to, to mm -hmm. do so. Mm -hmm. So, handling it this way, do, will funds actually come out of the medical? Correct. Trust? It would come out of the into medical the fund, fund, fund and, and move into the general and fund. And be designated. So our fund balance, our general fund balance, would increase by two hundred thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars, but committed specifically um, to, to, to the OPEB. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I would love someday to be able to skip that general fund step. <laughs> <laughs> well. Yeah. I mean, that's an option. You could yeah. say, I don't want to do this, and I mean... Right. Well, you know, it just, you know, you, you never know what happens in the future, and if we just... Well, that's why uh, we have it, you know, committed. Uh, okay. Yes, you can, in the same way it's sitting in the medical fund, and you and the Board of Finance have the ability to reallocate it, sitting in the general fund, it, it's the same. Right. It's the same. Mm -hmm. See, but I can't, I can't designate it in the medical fund. It, you know, it's right. it can't, there can't okay. be a separate yeah, classification. I, I don't mean to complicate it, but yeah, I'm just trying to explain. Yeah. Maybe we not be, so well, but <laughs> would we be getting ahead of ourselves if we make part of our motion that we'd also like to have the separate fund created and have the funds the trust put funding. into it? Yeah, okay. certainly start to that put that in place. Yeah, I, I'm 100 percent um, in favor of that. Yes, and so start looking so into the motion would that. then need to um, uh, make the transfer. To uh, a new designated uh, OPEB fund. Mm -hmm. We come back with a yeah. recommendation for establishing the fund. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. Okay. I'll, I'll make that motion. Yeah. I'll, I'll, second. Second. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Recusals? Hearing none. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you again. No, thank you. Sorry about this. Sorry we missed that the first time around. I, th I, th I think this is a continuation of our efforts to look a little longer term uh, as mm -hmm. we've done with the pension and you know continue to fund those things yeah. so that we don't get ourselves in a position where where we, the state finds itself mm -hmm. yeah. okay um, item six uh, environmental planner Kevin McGee Good morning, Kevin. And we're here to uh, six point one is discuss and takes possible action on a resolution adopting the two thousand eighteen South Central Region Multi Jurisdiction Hazard Mitigation Plan Update. Say that three times. Fast. Yeah, right. <laughs> Let me just set this up here. Okay. I'm write on the screen to follow through. Down. Yeah, probably Mitch, down. Mitch, behind you. One of those technology things that need to be updated is the room here. <laughs> remote, get a remote for the light. Um, at least maybe having half the lights on a switch. Yeah. Back lights on, front ones off, something uh, like yeah, that. Yeah, it's okay. No, you can't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the wish list. Money, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See my notes here also. <laughs> so here to discuss the um, South Central Regional Multi-Jurisdiction Hazard, Hazard Mitigation Plan update. The town had a plan which was approved in 2012. Their five-year plans. Yeah. Our plan is currently lapsing, and we are now um, um, joining the regional plan versus having our own plan. Um, put some. Um, the work is together and looking regionally is the, the, the concept that we've been working on for the past couple of years. Um, so this plan uh, uh, was prepared for the region, um, had consultants from Jamie Kaplan Consulting Company, 
um, with the assistance of Malone McBroom. They're the ones that did our original plan. And also um, Punchard um, Consulting Firms. Each one kind of took a different piece of the plan and put it together for us. Um, we held um, the regional planning process started over a year ago. Um, I was the representative for the town on this project here and their first planning meeting as a region started in May of 2017. And then um, we had local two local sort of planning meetings with input. Um, the first one was, was town staff and committee members in July of um, 2017. And then we had a, um, a town public hearing through the um, Hazard Mitigation Commission on October 3rd, 2017. Uh, as you can see from above this plan, actually next page down. Uh, there's multiple regions here involved with it. Um, it covers um, about our Scrog region. I think a town or two is missing from that now, but pretty much our whole Scrog region is now part of the plan. Guilford and Milford were basically <coughs> recently added to the plan. Um, we weren't part of it because we had our own plan last time through. Um, the reason to have a plan helps us uh, get federal funding, FEMA funding, um, for, for projects in town to help us more resilient. What do the um, colors represent? I'm not quite sure, to tell you the truth, looking at it, because um, Madison and Mirrodin are different shades, and I'm not sure if it's... I have no clue to tell you the truth there. Um, the... Um, kind of Uh, kind of let you kind of go over yeah. what is the mitigation and what the plan is about. Uh, mitigation is the effort to reduce lo the loss of life and property by lessening the impact of disasters. Um, mitigation action taken ahead of time prevents sort of reduces <coughs> the human and financial consequences later. Um, the purpose of uh, mitigation planning is to identify policies and actions that can be implemented over the long term to reduce risk of future losses. Uh, mitigation plans form the foundation of a community's long-term strategy to reduce disasters, losses, um, break the cycle of disaster damage and reconstruction and repetitive damage. Um, and um, kind of go over, kind of highlight the plan for the um, group here. Uh, what's in the plan, um, kind of review the table of contents is kind of the best way to kind of see what this whole plan is about. Um, so in the introduction you can see it's just the general um, um, definitions and what the plan's about. Um, the chapter two of the plan goes into the demographics, um, starts off with the demographics of the, the region, um, the South Central Regional Council of Government area. Uh, the climate of the whole region, transportation for the region, the land use of the region, and criti critical facilities of the region. Um, and this is sort of something they added this year, uh, the critical facilities for the region. And um, they looked at um, what's regional for the area for the facilities, and they identified the, the port and the haven and the um, regional airport as uh, critical uh, functions for us here. Um, and also the utilities um, in uh, protecting those and the importance of the electrical system, the gas and water right. system, and the towns with the public sewer systems there, uh, strengthening, kind of hardening those for storms. And then it goes into the individual um, um, demographics and um, for each region there. Excellent. Chapter three kind of goes into and discusses the whole planning process from the first set up meeting with the advisory board to the individual town meetings, um, the surveys I sent out, um, they had online for um, individual towns and stakeholders to um, comment on. Um, chapter four of the plan kind of goes into a hazard analysis, um, looking at things from extreme temperatures, hurricane, tropical storms, severe thunderstorms, the winter storms and nor'easters, uh, tornadoes, coastal erosion, dam failures, effects of drought, flood, sea level rise, earthquakes, and wildflowers. Uh, 
It then goes into wildfire. <laughs> <laughs> it then goes into and looks at um, how those fit into the um, individual towns. And I'll get kind of into Guilford's here in a yep. second. Uh, and then looking at um, uh, kind of give you a perspective of this whole plan, this regional plan is about 703 pages. Um, what I kind of broke down for the board here to look at, I think it was 200 pages, something like that. Mm -hmm. Kind of thinned out a lot of the other information here of the other towns. Um, then it goes into um, looking at the individual mitigation strategies for each town. Um, what was your previous strategies? Um, how were they handled in the past? And then what the future <coughs> strategies are. Um, it goes into then maintaining the plan for the future. Um, So as I indicated, they, they looked at and came up with the 12 profiles that we kind of went through and evaluated. Um, and then following those, uh, the committee came up with um, community goals or general goals, um, which kind of broke all those things down into um, five general topics here. Community planning, um, looking to reduce the impact of natural hazards by integrating natural hazard mitigation policies and practices into local community planning processes. Um, flood hazards, minimize flood hazards in the region by maintaining continued compliance with the National Flood Insurance Program, adopting higher regulation sta regulatory standards for new floodplain development, and implementing floodplain mitigation projects for existing flood prone structures. Um, trees, um, support the proper care of healthy trees, native trees across the region to increase the resilience to natural hazards, including severe storms, flooding, erosion, extreme heat, limit the impact of fallen and other hazardous trees by collaborating with, collaborating with the utility companies and property owners to cut limbs and remove trees that pose a threat to buildings, infrastructure, and utility lifelines. Um, regional, regional, regional collaboration um, is build the capacity for natural hazard mitigation and climate adaption at the local level through regional uh, collaboration. Um, so that's Guilford working with Madison, or Guilford working with Brantford or Madison with shared projects. Um, um, Guilford with Brantford is um, basically looking at 146 and the potential flooding through there and working then with the state and region trying to find solutions. So that's sort of a regional collaboration there. And kind of public awareness programs, um, again, the public aware of what's going on here um, either through creating literature or online presence. Uh, but I want to make get the public aware of what's going on. Kevin, can I uh, sure. ask a question? Uh, under the section flood hazards, uh, it uh, talks about adopting higher regulatory standards for new floodplain development. Um, what, what impacts do you see, are there going to be any impacts uh, by the adoption of this uh, uh, policy, uh, which, is, which makes all the sense in the world to do this regionally rather than have 15 towns uh, building their own? Um, but the higher regulatory standards, what does that mean in terms of uh, potential impact to zoning and or building? Well, in the regional plan, you are still at the local level allowed to decide what you want to do in terms of elevation and stuff like that. So right. it's just kind of a goal. These are basically goals saying right. we like to see the towns reach this level here. Okay. But it's not forcing the towns into elevating or doing anything. Right. So we have, a, do. We, have, we have a separate uh, discussion going on related to the free board, uh, the, the, the elevation right. level. So you want to talk to that? Um, just briefly. So under elevations and hazards there, um, there may be a deeper ch chapter here, but we can go here, is basically your flood, each house, depending on the flood zone, has has certain standards for, for first floor elevation, the elevation that um, utilities need to be kept at so they're not damaged during storms. In an area where, like the, the, the A zone, where it's kind of a, sh um, not waves, but kind of shallow water slowly moves up on a structure, um, these, this, right now the FEMA has a, an elevation where um, we'll just say elevation 12, we'll say the first floor has to be at. Um, but this is basically looking at and saying we want you to go higher than that knowing that there's sea level rise and storms are getting worse than what they've been in the past. And we want you to go up to a foot or two feet above the recommendations of FEMA um, to make sure that the residents are safe from the, the flooding actions that are occurring. And right. we're all seeing that right now on the news with what's happening down in the Virginias and Carolinas, Carolinas. and stuff down there. 
So, so this is a framework that has standards built into it that we would then adopt no. or modify our current uh, regulations Correct. to be in compliance with this. So this. Correct. Okay. Is there a report back responsibility? So let's say we do that. Do we have to report back to these folks that this is what we've done? Yes, there is. And um, once we'll go down further, yeah, show the okay. list of mitigation yeah. actions, then we'll kind yeah. of go into okay. the reporting there. Yeah, good. So those are basically the goals the commission came up with. Um, our, um, as part of the plan, um, as you saw on the table of context, uh, they went to a risk analysis, and which part of that looks at is your critical facilities. Uh, and so, Guilford's critical facilities. Uh, this is these came up at the um, jurisdictional meeting with all the department heads and um, commission member chairs and stuff. And I'm not sure why they use certain colors because these are, didn't even print that well on paper with this green in the mm. borders here. Um, but our critical facilities are the, um, the police station, basically emergency services, our police stations, the fire headquarters, which is also our emergency operations center, our um, fire stations, the, our mis mis municipal facilities of town hall, uh, which also serves as our emergency dispatch center, um, the public works garage, our transfer sta station, the library, and our brush relief disposal areas. Uh, following Sandy, we kind of realized the importance of sort of two things in here, uh, maintaining access to the brush and leaf area so we can kind of help clear the roads and have so, uh, an area to path to get rid of the material at, um, being the brush and leaf disposal area. And then the transfer station realized after several days on the electricity, um, homeowners need to get rid of the material going bad in the refrigerators and freezers. Um, and having it in a closed container uh, versus an open container, which really uh, created issues at the transfer station uh, during that time. We also added, uh, also have a critical facilities, the community center, our shelters, which are the community center and the high school. And then also then our, our healthcare facilities, including our um, um, assisted living and um, elderly housing complexes. So we have the Gelford House, the Apple Rehab Facility, the Gables, the Yelp. Shoreline Medical Facility, Boston Terrace, Stage and Tallow, and Guilford Court. And then our, our water resources, which is our, our water tanks and pump stations in town, supporting our public water systems here. Um, the, the problem statement that they came up in the plan for the town of Guilford, uh, working through our, um, our, uh, has, our has investigation station in town. Our problem statements, our concerns in town are, are coastal flooding, sea level rise, high winds, um, dam failures. Um, there are several dams and um, of different um, classifications in town, um, uh, with one or two being high hazard dams. And um, geographic concerns of basically widespread flooding throughout major majority of town. Um, actually, shoreline flooding hazards through the town, which is looking at Route 146, which has quite a few areas which flood on us. Our West River corridor, we can't forget our inland people, where um, West River does have floods over our banks in several sections. Um, Munger Brook on County Road, uh, which floods during um, heavy rainfalls. Um, the flooding up on um, uh, by the Cornipog. Um, this one was still being kind of continued um, in projects. We didn't close it out yet. It was a Spinning Mill Brook on Long Hill Road. Um, but we'll report on that being closed out the next round. And then the um, Sitchin's <coughs> Head Vineyard Point area at all, which um, had um, flooding concerns. Um, wildflower concerns, we basically heavily forest in the town of Guilford um, with the Eastwood Reserve, Timberlands, Northwoods, which were all potential concerns for um, uh, forest fires in town here. Um, vulnerable um, assets there. Um, there was a correction made, which I didn't take there, but the, there's concern with the community center um, um, meeting certain um, hurricane um, wind standards and stuff. Um, fire stations downtown, which are located in basically the surge area for um, the major, I think it's either third or three or four um, 
level surge, flood surges. Um, and then note that the town hall was also um, affected by the 38 hurricane, so we we're um, potential even up to the town green of um, flooding here. These are some areas which um, concerns for flooding still exist. And our um, mitigation strategies for Guilford, our former one, the town of Guilford had about 130 mitigation actions in our, our former plan. Uh, and you can see in the um, what the action items are, and then are we continuing with these items here? Um, several items were eliminated um, based on when we went into this plan here, the consultants advised us that FEMA pretty much looks at a five year horizon. Right. So if you don't think you'd be able to do something in five years, you should, really shouldn't be including it in, into your current plan. Or if it's something you might be doing in the future, break it down into subsections for it, uh, which we did with several of these items here. Uh, several items um, were closed out and were combined into one general topic um, for um, public outreach. Instead of having each little sub-item as an outreach Good item job. there kind of makes it easier somewhat to manage here. Um, so this is the um, 130 that we originally had with sort of the explanation of um, um, why they were um, moved on. Some of them, like I said, the high school use of the primary shelter, that was completed. Uh, now one of our major shelters in town. And now, um, like I said, I'll jump to what are- Kevin, if you go back up sure. for a second. Certainly. Uh, which number are they? Are right which there, uh, 16. Yep. Um, that will be part of the discussion with the facilities uh, task force that we just uh, allocated $50,000 for. Um, certain portions of the public works facility are in the flood zone, and several of the buildings are right, just at the minimum out. flood elevation right. levels. Okay, Kevin. So that one's, like I said, it's. One that's sort of listed there, it's listed as delayed. Um, it's that one might of those be more than you, five years, but. Um, grants, who knows what funding, what comes with town center south planning. Um, so that's sort of a placeholder sitting in the in a plan there. Uh, so we've got 130 items, which reduced down to about 35 items in the um, new plan, which I kind of go over what our new mitigation items are that we can be looking for in the next five years to. Um, to be working on our, our basically our goals for the next five years. They don't have to be done, but these are sort of our goals for the year. Um, evacuation signs, we, there's some up, kind of get the people away from the shoreline, but there's still more that need to go up to kind of direct people towards the um, uh, high school for the evacuation. And some of the signs need um, arrows pointing out, place on so they kind of point people in the right um, direction when they're coming out of Mulberry Point mm -hmm. to know how to get up towards the high school. Um, trying to still get the word out on the um, reverse 911 systems that we have in town to get people uh, on the list of um, notification of um, when problems do arise in certain neighborhoods to get notified of what those issues are and notification of evacuations in the areas there. Um, trying to work with planning and zoning to get them to kind of put in their planning and zoning subdivision regulations and even new development regulations that kind of bury utilities there. It's kind of a quick way to get neighborhood back up in operation um, when there's no wires in the way for public works to kind of go in and remove trees. Uh, public, um, as part of the um, public outreach there, the Marina Commission kind of posed a concern of um, erosion at their um, marina there, which is affecting sort of the parkland sidewalk area there some stabilization there. Kevin, can I interrupt again? Sure. Uh, item three, underground utilities require that utilities be placed underground in new developments. Would that require uh, an ordinance uh, or is that an adoption on the zoning? That would be a, um, a zoning change. Okay. Where, where are, are, um, are Probably we under subdivision. All right. And even maybe if they want to push it to site plan, if it's a new um, uh, industrial complex, that kind of maybe have them 
bury the wires to it. Okay, so let's take a look at the most recent development. There's one over on Cherry Street, uh, two yep. or three houses. Yep. Was was that? Are the are the utilities buried up there? Do the residents know? are burying to the properties, but you're looking more when there's a new road going in there that they okay. that the the whole infrastructure for. So having tele telephone poles put up with the development, okay. that the developer runs and buries the uh, power lines from the existing pole on the main road through the development there. Okay. So where do you happen to know where the town planner is related to uh, the changing the zoning for new developments at this point? I'm not sure where that that falls that right would, now. That would be that would be in George's shop. That'd be in George's hand or the planning committee or one of those there. Okay, because this is identified as a high priority yeah. and it has implementation schedule of 2018, mm -hmm. uh, as do the previous two. Um, so the question, and again, fair, but yep. at some point we'd like to see, uh, you know, what, I know we're just adopting this now, sure. but I know a lot of work has already been going on on some yep. of these things. So at some point we'd probably like look to see an update as to which of these are actually progressing. Yeah. Well, if we, if we adopt a resolution, are, right. are we not then committing to these on here? Are, yeah. are we not putting ourselves at risk if we identify something at high priority 2019 and then we fail to do it? There's no risk with, with FEMA there. These are kind of um, yeah. guideline dates there. So FEMA doesn't hold you, um, penalize you if you don't meet those time periods. Those are kind of self-imposed um, that we, we placed on it as from the committee there. And, and, and just going forward, um, What's the mechanism by which we're checking to see where we are with each of these things? Is that That's the job of the Hazard Mitigation Commission. Okay. So they kind of touch base with each um, sort of department on a so thing twice a, a year. The committee kind of meets with each kind of like the fire department, the public works department sees where they are with their, with their action items there. And then they report to you guys, the Hazard Mitigation Commission. Of, where um, they have things fall out here okay. and how people are moving along with their items there. All right. Okay, good. Um, increased funding for true removals there. Um, That's pretty self serving. <laughs> <laughs> Take the fifth. <laughs> but you know, we're, we're, we're kind of laughing in Kevin's <coughs> tree warden, but for as long as I been involved with the town, we never have enough money to take the trees down. Right. And it is, it can be a, a, a serious problem when something, when a limb falls on somebody's car, which has happened. So I really do think we, there is a yeah. big issue with trees this yeah. year with the ash, um, yeah. mm -hmm. gypsy moth damage to the oak trees up in North Guilford. There's a lot of um, things that popped up this past year, which uh, I suspect Kevin will be looking for <laughs> additional uh, funding for that. We'll one, <laughs> see how things go. Yeah. We'll keep you updated on that. Um, extend the water, public water. Um, that's kind of in pro progress here. Yep. Um, you see we have the um, public outreach here, which was combined a bunch of items together, um, dealing with awareness of um, storms. Um, yep. The health department actually sends out in a regular Every year, every couple of years, a little flyer in the mail um, regarding the, uh, the town's preparedness and what people should do in the event of storms there. Uh, look, we're coordinating with DOT uh, with work on 146 for our areas that flood out on a regular basis. Um, um, Jones's Bridge here by River Street on, on Water Street there. Um, the Hidden Lake where everybody goes crabbing there and um, by Sagemans Head Road during very severe storms on Lee Road and up by the Leach Farm there and also by the Branford Guilford line, our major uh, areas that flood out. Um, get enrolled in the uh, community rating system. I know that um, uh, Mark Damiani, the former assistant town engineer, was working on this um, project before he left and something that the um, Commission has commission hazard mitigation commission would like to see uh, kind of continued out. Okay. This affords um, people um, which are pay um, into the flood program there um, with the town participating in this, meeting certain um, uh, benchmarks. Um, the town gets um, and actually residents get certain discounts on their insurance policies. Sure. It is a management issue um, where somebody that has to be committed to it on the town side of managing the program. Um, 
looking to um, prove egress out of Indian Cove um, during storms is kind of pushed back to the um, the time period, uh, five year period here. I mean, this is just basically, and this is where I went into um, the original plan had these as full action items here. Um, these um, uh, studies um, are now uh, going into design phases instead of like we're going to have this whole thing done, but maybe within the five years, maybe come up with some sort of plan to do this. And if funding comes along, you have a plan that we then can uh, um, almost sort of a shovel ready type of thing that you can go after funding for. Uh, so we have that for Daniel, Daniel Avenue and also Chimney Corner um, down in the um, Sixth Head Prospect uh, Avenue um, Road there, and Sixth Head there. Uh, look at doing coastal um, reviews and studies, um, um, looking at the, the erosion issues along Chidden Beach, Grass Island, and Chaffinch Island. Um, the importance of that is that our, um, um, some people may look at it and while there's salt marsh behind that, the problem is that the more you chew up a salt marsh, the more, the lessens the cushion to the shoreline. Our salt marshes kind of add our uh, cushion to the um, the residents then, which are behind these areas here um, from the impacts of storms. Um, several areas in the salt marshes, there are people do make paths and stuff to it, so there's some, um, um, and this is a carryover from before, creating um, um, pile of the walkway so people aren't walking in the marshes, beating it down, which then creates also additional erosion issues and um, collapse of the marshes there. Um, the studies of the municipal buildings to determine how we fall with roof damage due to heavy snow, uh, heavy snow. I remember about three years ago we had the 30 inches of snow on uh, a bunch of roofs in the towns, um, the schools, the community center, uh, uh, all at risk there. Um, get into the net reverse 911 system of the um, failure areas for um, if any of the high hazard dams fall to those residents along it so they're aware of um, um, the, the oncoming flush of water uh, if there's a, a, a failure of uh, one of the major dams in town. <coughs> uh, a lot of this is pretty much along the West River corridor in town here. Um, conduct our inspections of the um, town owned dams. Um, continue with the um, Living Shoreline um, program uh, protection of Chidden Beach there. There's been a you know, conceptual plan done as part of the uh, uh, so, um, Scruggs um, Regional uh, Hazard uh, uh, Coastal Resilience Planning uh, and kind of get that up to the next level um, of permit ready um, plans because um, federal government and, uh, and other um, Nature and uh, outdoor organizations sometimes have grant programs available for, for this fish and wildlife service and stuff. Uh, have rotating grant programs for design ready um, programs there. Um, as noted before, you saw on the other plan um, the relocation of um, public works outside the flood and surge zone. Uh, kind of work with our marinas for um, finding areas to store boats during major storms. Uh, I'm not sure if many people remember, but after Sandy, a lot of boats were picked up from the boat yard and were just positive up along tree line mm -hmm. and trying to work with them, maybe finding some inland areas where the boats can be stored so they're not creating, becoming projectiles towards our residential areas. Um, develop a hydro, hydraulic and hydro, hydraulic model for the West River. Um, kind of looking at the flows and the uh, how that's creating um, additional erosion to the to the region. Looking at upgrade of potential uh, facilities along the um, West River, um, the uh, bridge and culverts uh, at Lake Quinnipaug were identified as uh, uh, potential issues there. Munger Brook, which was identified before in the original plan. Um, the um, Hazmat Gate, or the Coastal Resilience Plan, has identified pretty much Whitfield Street to View Terrace as uh, 
plains uh, areas which can be potentially flooded um, coming up by between 20 and the 2020s to 2030 time range here and looking at potential plans of models for elevating those roads. Uh, looking at protection of the wetlands because it's, um, those are, like I said, our cushions protecting um, properties in the future. Uh, providing outreach to the residents regarding the dams in town and potentially the uh, requirements of um, the landowners which may have some of these smaller dams in town. Um, Cooper Lakes Association, um, Valley Shores Association, Clare Lake all which have um, maintained their own in individual dams outside the town of Guilford. Um, provide public outreach to residents around the our forest areas regarding forest fire damage and how to kind of protect their homes from damage. The storms and working with the um, state with um, reduction of the Phragmites which um, years ago was a big threat to um, our coastal residents and now with the control we've been doing with it we haven't seen the um, uh, major um, uh, fires in the Fremont salt marshes that we had 10-15 years ago. Uh, so that's our um, pretty much our um, mitigation strategies for the town and then as part of it um, let's kind of go over what the um, the region is looking at for um, their um, their actions and kind of supporting the town here for acting as a region. I got that number wrong my notes here, I have to back up to it. Okay, so the Scroggs, um, kind of in the Scrog and the regional zone, regional thing, is that they are overall responsible for the plan itself. We then provide input to them, so they manage the, the plan. Um, they host the um, um, annual meetings that are required as part of the plan on a regional basis. Uh, they'll maintain a, a website. Um, with the plan on it and hopefully having some additional information which can be shared through the region uh, regarding flood hazards, storms, and those type of things. Um, work with the towns with the promotion of the um, of CRS system. Um, if there's potential, if a lot of towns are interested, um, um, see if it's regionally able to get a consultant to help put the things together. Uh, I know as a couple of years ago, there wasn't really that many towns interested in the CRS system. Um, there's only a couple of them <coughs> sure to really get inundated and have issues there where a lot of them have sometimes smaller rivers, floodings and stuff. Um, assisting us with education and awareness problems. Um, helping and supporting and letting us, um, the towns know of um, grant and funding sources for projects and even working on projects as a regional basis because sometimes there's equity and sometimes the sources look at um, funding a regional thing versus a small little uh, project. So that's uh, kind of what the um, regional plan has and how they're supporting us and that's kind of the uh, quick overview of the, um, the plan and what's, what's Excellent. about. Excellent. Kevin, thank you. Uh, you've obviously Welcome. invested a lot of time and uh, effort and passion in this, uh, in this program. Um, and um, you're the staff uh, liaison to hazard mitigation. Hazard mitigation at this so point here. So you, what is your role related to interfacing with the other department heads? Are you, uh, are you the primary interface between um, the hazard mitigation committee and all town agencies or just your own? Uh, the way it's been set up is that the um, a kind of, I'm actually on the hazard mitigation commission as a regular board member okay. but also as a sort of a staff, staff member there member since well. the, um, uh, the time of the creation of the commission they couldn't find enough town residents interested in it so myself and Dennis Johnson were kind of placed on the commission there. Thank you. Um, the, um, but we kind of have it set up so I'm not really the one bombarding everybody we kind of let and kind of give the commission a role so that there's so the commission members have been kind of teamed up and then they follow up with the um, they're kind of assigned the department what they, what they follow with. Okay. 
Good. So Good. there's like two people that kind of go talk with the fire department. There's two that kind of go talk with George regarding his stuff. Good. All right. And, and those interactions are ongoing? On ongoing, correct. Yes. Okay. To try to get us to Sue's point, to try to get some of those uh, items checked off and done yeah. and completed. Correct. And again, uh, I think uh, your question was valid. Uh, this doesn't commit us to doing anything. These are goals. Those are goals, right. With potential uh, uh, completion dates. Dates, correct. I, I, I'm Go sorry, John. I, I question that. I understand what you're saying conversationally, but that's not what I'm seeing in the resolution or this document. Right. And I'll add that I don't believe we've been given a proper opportunity to review the material that was provided to us thoroughly. Mm -hmm. um, it also, I also have an objection to the fact that there is a 700-page document, and I, I appreciate you are you know, trying to digest it yeah. so that we focus on the important parts, but the entire document wasn't made available to us. Um, it was so. passed to, as Tracy has a link, mm -hmm. um, getting the 700 pages to everybody is a large file we, and we not knowing. 250 pages, I'm not sure. That's the abridged version. Of the that bridge version. Right. And then the other one, 700 pages. The bridge has all everything of Guilford. The other main document has all the subsections for the other individual towns and what their action items are. Um, I kind of pulled those out to kind of make it easier for you to find your your information which pertains to Guilford there. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand. I, I did, appreciate I did that. include in uh, the end of it um, the actually the mitigation items for all the individual individual towns so you know what sort of Bethany's looking at for their their mm -hmm. items here um, Brantford what their concerns are so mm -hmm. you kind of see what they're moving forward with in terms of those items there also you're asking for the 700 page document I believe it should be made available to us since we are being asked to adopt the entire document well, it should yeah, at least be available but in the and resolution you know, they're asking for future revisions and plan maintenance are required mm -hmm. by some act of yeah. FEMA right so anytime this plan gets updated um, through the like the Commission wants to change to it the board wants to make a change to it, the region wants to make a change to it, FEMA has to approve those changes. This, um, no, that isn't, it sounds like it's, it's, sounds like it's the sense. other direction. It sounds like FEMA can tell us okay. what to do. <coughs> FEMA can tell us what to do right now. No, it's, well, yeah. <laughs> let's, yeah. let's be realistic. Um, this is sort of the template so, so that came to us the, the board. The idea here do. is we're doing this in concert with South Central Council of Regional Governments so we don't have to do it by ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I and I don't have to come back to this board and ask for a $50,000 uh, um, allocation to hire a consultant to do this. This is one of the benefits of the regional organization to which we belong. I agree wholeheartedly with you. This, you know, 700-page document, uh, and, and we don't necessarily know the difference between what is required and what is uh, desirable. I look at mm -hmm. item number two, um, you know, uh, under the resolutions, respective officials identified the mitigation strategy of the plan are hereby directed to pursue. Pursue, pursue does not yeah. mean complete. Uh, right. Means yeah. Pursue. Uh, these are these are uh, clearly our goals. Now, the question I have here is: uh, it, there may be some, is there is there a timing consideration here uh, that we need to get on board with this plan, or we're going to miss the bus? There. Timing issues because all the towns and all the boards have to make the resolution to get this effective for the region. Okay. All right. um, what's the time? And then we yeah, are, is, yeah. and we are actually lapsing. So if there's a funding that comes up that we want to go after, mm -hmm. we can't go after it right now. Mm -hmm. we, say Until we are we lapsing. Get, what's that? When when does that? Our action? plan hasn't been updated. Our yeah. plan lapsed in nope. approved 17. in 2012. So our plan lapsed in 2017. So we been outside of eligibility to ask for funding from FEMA for special projects. We can, if a major storm comes, there are certain things we can still get funding for, but we can't go after some of the special funding rounds that come up right now. And when was the last time prior to the, the 2012 was the original plan. Yeah, when was the last time we actually applied for any funding under that? Um, the beginning of 2012, um, shortly after that plan was, we asked for funding, and then we got funding for, put in for a bunch of projects. The first project we got funding for, and the only project we got funding for was elevation of Chapman Island Road. 
and that was the only one that we were able to get funding for. But we, I think we put in for, I think the committee put in for about five different projects. Okay. And that was the one that they gave us for some reason. So all of these things that have been identified as potential um, goals or, Goal, right. or mitigation strategies, strategies. right? Yep. Um, a number of them there is federal money available for. We would not, unless unless we have an active plan. Correct. All right, that's been approved by FEMA. We can't go after. We can't go after any monies to supplement what the taxpayers would have to uh, uh, go over to do. Correct. Yep. The only thing we're allowed right now with FEMA is post funding, post storm, post -storm fund funding. Funding. Right. Nothing on a proactive basis. Nothing on a proactive basis until the plan gets approved. Okay. Um, so you're not you're not sure if there's a, a hard deadline on this for compliance. They are always well, told they want as soon as possible approvals from the groups there. There's Milford, which is sort of limbo like we are, which is trying to also get back into the cycle. Okay. And other towns similar to us. Short of me having a discussion, I have not had a discussion with anybody at Scrog on this. Um, and um, like you said, the implementation schedules are like you said, they're not hard. FEMA doesn't hold us to it. That's why um, there's a form which we have to fill out on a regular basis, of, on a yearly basis. Why didn't you meet this? We kind of have to fill out a form and say um, lack of funding, um, um, not enough. We're doing too many other projects, but there's a a form we fill out on a yearly basis, okay. which we report to Scrog of why these items may have not been met and why they're pushed off to another in year. Our, so in our previous plan that was before it lapsed, did yep. we have that same requirement to same report? Same requirement, correct, yep. So yep. Did, did we do anything in 2017 in terms of... Uh, um, we, as a board, never really carry through with notification to FEMA on a regular basis. Okay. Um, so as part of the wrap-up of this thing, I had to go through and identify why the items weren't done to kind of close out the old plan and go into this plan here. All right. So you you are you, you saying you, that you have not talked to the other towns from Scrum at this point on this on this issue? No, I have not. But we're Maybe. we're one of two that are not participating at this point, right? Milford and us. Um, we're all now going into participating, but right. they were not originally. Now they're coming into the program. So Eugene is the key contact person. Maybe the best thing at this point in time, we could either authorize you. Uh, to go ahead with something like this, and or maybe you should talk to the other towns and just you know, yeah, get a comfort I'll, level here. I'll talk to Tom and, uh, and, and Jamie on both sides. Um, yeah, that, I think that's that's a nice compromise. Um, I mean, I, I I think this is an important thing to be part of. Uh, I do, you know, to Susan's point, have some concerns about making commitments. Uh, I want to make the commitments to getting some of these things done, but I just want to make sure that we aren't tying our hands in some way. Well, let me ask you this. I don't mean to be a wise wise guy, but how familiar were you with the original set of objectives, the 131, and did this board review them at any point during that five-year window yeah. when that plan was in we, place? We, you know, we were involved in establishing the, the first you know hazard mitigation right. and I just thought the, you were. after coming out of the storm she said you know we gotta we gotta do something here and that's uh, when we established it and started trying to, to find answers to questions that you know we didn't even know what the questions were at some time but we recognized coming out of those storms in 12 and 13 that you know we had to be ready and I think it's <coughs> admirable uh, you know that the other towns also recognize it and this is the type of thing where it is bigger than any individual town I mean when a storm hits it doesn't hit Guilford, Guilford it hits, yeah. you know so uh, you know and it's not just storms I mean there's many other things so but I do think it is a big enough project that it merits just a little bit more investigation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And perhaps there's a way to build into the wording of the resolution itself something to the effect that, you know, this is our, it, it's priority, it's our plan, but we're not committing. 
Mm -hmm. uh, my assumption is this is a standard resolution that Scrog has issued to it's everybody. You know, and our that ability might to be, change. Yeah. Okay. you know, maybe it doesn't fit us. Yeah. Um, I guess I have two questions. If you're describing this as a necessary first step in the town's ability to get funding from either FEMA or some other sources yep. with regard to these hazard mitigations that are described in this report, right? So if we join the group, do we make the application individually? Or do we have to run everything through SCROG now? Mm -hmm. And then are we sort of one of we 35 can, applications or 29 can, applications? We can go in as projects on their own or as projects over the region. So Guilford can still go after funding for a project just in Guilford without the SCROG participating. And, and okay. So we can put our own application in for, we want to, um, the one that came up there for is protecting the, the parking lot at the marina there. Yeah, we well, can go well. in and put in a grant fund just for that project without the region uh, going through the region. Well, you, you sort of touched on my next question, which is, I'm, I'm also curious, I mean, I, th 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 this is almost too much to bite off at this one meeting, and I get a sense, that unless we're under some real pressure here today, which I'm not hearing you say we are. No, I think you can go another two weeks or so. Okay. Uh, so it would be nice to be able to digest this a little bit more. But I'd be really curious to know, like, what your sense of what are the half a dozen things you're going to attack on this list first, and what our prospects are of actually getting funding for those things. And, where we're going to be a year and a half from now. Right, well, I, want to, I also want to take an opportunity to answer partially the question you just asked Kevin. Scrog gets, Scrog is a distributor of state and federal funds. Okay. So by being outside this plan, we will be ineligible for any monies that, the, that get directed through Scrog to the region. And for those of you who have watched the change in the federal di uh, distributions. It comes through the state. There's no direct, there's very little direct uh, uh, federal to local municipalities uh, money anymore, all right, except through grants. Most of these grants are now being uh, directed down to be managed through the state, and the state has used these seven regional uh, councils of governments mm -hmm. to allocate, and they make decisions on where they get the money. For instance, we just applied uh, last week, uh, Janice and I, uh, we, didn't apply. We, had, we had indicated our interest in funding to um, reconstruct Goose Lane. Mm -hmm. Well, that has to be approved by South Central Council Regional Governments for us to get the federal and state money. So being mm -hmm. outside the plan is not a place that we necessarily want to be mm -hmm. if we think there's going to continue to be that pathway of federal and state money particularly as it relates to resiliency. We actually have that note here that the previous board approved the town going into this plan. Mm. So it's not like I'm jumping at you being working with them and then kind of throwing at you guys yeah. right now. Okay. The previous yeah. board has approved us to participate in this so plan. So this is they, your idea. They've agreed we're at the end of this yeah. process. No, this is now. critical. Mm -hmm. Being critical of you, it's right. just a no, function of us understanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah and that's right. and just it's let you new, know it's not you're I'm asking you now to put us into the plan that's been the decisions been made mm -hmm. and now we're just kind of coming towards the end of that yeah. process. Devil's okay. in the detail. It's an evolution. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, we right. do have to Yeah. Well, well like I said there's a lot of pages here and like I said that's why I kinda went through the Highlights yeah. there for you to kind of get awareness of what's in this this document here. No. All right. Uh, do we want to table this for two weeks? Yes. And I would. Where uh, does the committee stand on this? They the committee it. voted at their August meeting to to move it forward to you guys. It would be helpful to see so that. Yeah. You know. So we'll have. Um, we I'm not sure Steve Cops is available today, but we'll see if make sure he's at will we'll attend the next meeting there. Right. Who's the chair of the committee there? And better still, if there's minutes of the meeting, that'd be helpful. Yeah. Good idea. Trace, can we find the minutes of the approval from the previous board? Thank you. Great. Thanks. Um, so okay. we'll, table, we'll table this, and I would respectfully request that uh, you submit to me an uh, email with the questions and concerns okay. that you have sure. that I can address with my counterparts okay. in the other towns and at South Central uh, Council Regional Governments. Um, not the least of which is, can we do anything about the wording in the resolution, which Probably is not going to happen, but it certainly is a question. Of yeah, I'm not sure if that's word that came down from FEMA that we have to use, or if it's something they came up on their own on that. Mm -hmm. Just that answer alone. 
Yeah, if I know, if, in my limited understanding of Scrog, this one size fits all, basically. Pretty so, <laughs> well, which is the advantage of a regional group. It's like yeah. you're trying, right. you don't, you're not yeah, constantly you reinventing the wheel. Exactly. Right. Okay. 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 Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. You're not like that. Yeah. That's your good. You go to sleep. <laughs> Was Mitch, was Mitch sleeping in there? I do have a 10.30. Oh, he was on it. All right. At 10.30 you got? Okay. <coughs> well, then Brian, okay. Brian will have to uh, do the Reader's Digest version of his presentation. <laughs> All right. Uh, item uh, 7, uh, Economic Development Coordinator, Brian McGlone. And uh, some of that one is discussion about parking uh, ideas around town center. So. Oh, good. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Brian. I'll try to be brief. This is really an update of a project we've been working on. Um, and I'm really here representing the Economic Development Commission. The commission really started this initiative, um, so I'm here speaking on their behalf. Um, just maybe for the public's benefit, you know, the charter of the Economic Development Commission, the EDC is charged to conduct research into economic conditions and trends in the town and to make recommendations to appropriate town officials and agencies regarding actions to improve the town's economic condition and development. So, I mean, that's in, if you look on the website and look up EDC, you'll see that uh, key driver. The 2015 POCD was updated, or, and there's an economic development section, uh, and it's called Making Compatible Commerce and Livelihood. And there's a couple of key strategies that are part of that section that include expand infrastructure and transportation initiatives to adv advance economic development and to expand tourism opportunities to support local businesses. If you go back a few years ago, putting the new parking, the updating the Whitfield Water Street parking lots was really an action item out of these broad topics that we're talking about. So just as a reminder, I mean, that was predominantly 2015-16 timeframe where we had a state grant um, supporting uh, this public-private partnership and collaboration between the town and the property owners and the businesses that ultimately served our residents, our businesses, our tourists, and uh, friends, and so on. A goal of that whole project was to create a more pedestrian-friendly environment, including sidewalks, crosswalks, lighting, creating more storefronts in the back, I mean, if you look at the green and the walkway and how you view stores, we had an awful lot of stores in the back that didn't have that same feel. So the whole parking project, that was one of the objectives. And expanding the green into that area, um, predominantly with, I mean, the sidewalks and then the lighting fixtures are the same that's on the green. So we were trying to stretch all of that. So overall, I mean, we feel the mission was accomplished from that standpoint. But in, in uh, an offshoot, or maybe on the downside, um, we probably lost about six to eight parking spaces when that project was done. And that's not totally accurate either, because there were undersized parking spaces or identified as compact only. And frankly, in a few cases, the handicapped accessible spaces were undersized and not proper. So. We lost six or eight, but maybe really because and they also were the, the delineation in certain areas were so grid. unusual right. that those spaces may not have been used. You know what I mean? To me, as a, person, a frequent user of that parking lot, I feel that it is a thousand times better, and you don't notice the loss of well, the six. That's that's good to hear because it is. They are all new. I mean, the standards yeah. we have for parking spaces are now adopted there. However, um, I mean, residents and businesses were asking for help because they did start feeling the loss of those spaces. So the e uh, EDC Commission, a couple people took on the task of looking at parking, going down Woodfield Street, predominantly from St. George's Church south to Water, Water over to Augers, and then in the back lot. And we came up with 260 spaces available throughout all of that area which again predominantly serves those stores and businesses. And then we talked to the business owners and found out that with all of them, there were about 125 employees alone oh. mm -hmm. serving those businesses. 
And that, that includes some of the rental tenants up, up above that you really can't change. And granted, not all 125 are there all the time. They, you know, they come with shifts, but we realize there's a big portion of that lot just supporting uh, the employees. So we said, what are we gonna do with this? And we did look uh, at a couple different things. I mean, thinking about buying property there to you know, build up, tear down a building, put up a parking lot, not very popular around town, around the green and historic district. So we reached out to St. George's Church and looked at their parking lot. Um, it's often underutilized and uh, to their credit, they assisted us during the parking lot renovations and let us use that space. So we did approach St. George and talk about using their space. We asked for 75 parking spaces that would really be identified for merchant use, the employees, not really, not that they, we would hold back um, if a resident or a tourist used them, but the idea was the merchants would start moving there and freeing up a lot of space in the primary lot. So we have drafted an agreement with uh, St. George that they are comfortable with and we are comfortable with from the town's perspective. Pam has been involved with us on this project. Um, and a couple things that are identified that right now I don't have the costs on, but the things that are desired. And that includes a, a concrete walkway to connect the stores over to the St. George's parking lot. And we're looking at two different options. One, to possibly run parallel behind what I'm calling the red building where Baloo's and the hair of the dog and South. That would be just a straight shot behind the building and then another one would actually go down off the other end and through the St. George's property. So over the sidewalk would be on town property? No. Oh, no, no. George's. See, the, the red building actually is owned by a private landowner, oh, Craig Maturo. Okay. Okay. So should we go in that direction, we would have to get an easement from Craig to allow us to do that. And then a turn across St. George property, there's yeah. a little bit of a turn. A, a, a little bit. Uh, and there's a couple of trees there that we have to have a better look at uh, for fear of damaging the roots. And then the other approach would be extending off the end and going totally on St. George's property. However, that brings some other challenges. It's a little bit longer. Uh, there's a grade and, you know, uh, taking into consideration handicapped accessibility, construction costs could be more. So right now, I don't have the answers, but we're looking at both alternatives to see what are the economics of the things. And then uh, I, I have approached Craig conceptually about the idea, and, you know, he's conceptually but wants to know more. Um, and then as part of the agreement, uh, St. George is, is asking to us, the town, to provide some liability insurance for those spaces. And Pam has done some looking into that, and it's feasible. Uh, and again, I don't have the exact cost, but it's kind of 3000 ish dollars for that kind of liability insurance, something like that on an annual basis. So from where we're at, I mean, we want to, assuming you're in agreement with the concepts, we want to determine the actual open costs that are there. And then the next step would be to go to the property owners and the businesses, because another part of the St. George Agreement, we would put uh, a little tag off the windshield of the cars, color-coded that we know it's from these businesses and these groups, so that if there are any issues or problems, we know who to go back to. Um, so again, we'd have to get the property owners and the individual businesses to buy in on that and we have a brief agreement drafted for them to say how they would support it um, just one more side note to add to this or add to the need uh, I DOT was here again on Friday and I haven't gotten a final yet but um, and we've talked a little bit about this there's two parallel spaces in front of you know breakwater books and cilantro and that area those definitely have to be removed and then in a recent DOT recommendation. They want to remove two more parallel uh, angled spaces that are just north of the crosswalk, right in front of the, market. the marketplace where that crosswalk goes across. It's right near the crosswalk. Yeah. yeah. So uh, again, they, DOT was here Friday, and I haven't got a final on it, but I think at a minimum there's one leaving there, maybe even two. Mm -hmm. So a total of you know three to four more spaces that we have to pull out of the. 
the town center parking. Um, so I'm really here updating you and advising you, see if you have any questions or concerns that we haven't maybe dealt with yet that, that I can pursue. Is there I, I any? <laughs> My first question is, um, besides taking care of the liability insurance for the church, which I think is a, a reasonable request on their part, are they going to get some financial remuneration for giving over these 75 spots? No. And at their request, we are not. not. They, we did talk about that, but they looked into it. And frankly, I think they felt if we they were renting those spaces to us, it would further increase their liability. So they said, hey, you can have them. Right. Okay. Knowing that in order for parking spaces to be used, they've, they've got to be convenient, whether employees or customers or at all. I think this is a good plan and we should pursue it, but also that property that's between the red building of Maturos and the church's barn, uh, there have been times when the church has utilized that for parking yeah. and you know I think if that could ever be expanded into a, you know you know some sort of a parking lot without asphalt and that type of thing get the dumpsters you know enclosed and in a better location if you could ever square up that parking lot there I mean, I, I think that would add to the convenience, which would add to the utilization. Obviously more cost, but I would recommend uh, maybe you start pursuing, considering something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's a good point, Charles. We, we um, of the prior, we did have conversations with our, the prior priest about the town or somebody acquiring even that section, um, and, and there was some resistance to selling off that parcel, but maybe there is well, a lease opportunity. Maybe even just some conservation easement or some something yeah. like that, where, you know, rather than potentially it ever being built or, or something. I just think that if it's ultra convenient, it will get used, where a walkway in convincing the employees that they have to use that, yeah, I'm not saying it's not doable, but, you know, it's just one more hurdle, and if it was if we could ever find a way to use that corner, uh, you know, to the church's convenience in the weekend and, and yeah. that type of thing, it just get the dumpsters out of there. And, and it's something worth pursuing. No, it's a good oh, point. I, yeah. I don't want to overextend it. So. Okay. Okay. It's part of this overall review you described it as you know, parking generally on the green. It, 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 have you evaluated the amount, and it's something I mentioned once before, but the amount of Handicap spaces? Are we? Uh, is it adequate? Are we? Are there, are there state regulations? Are there any proposed changes? I mean, um, that's three questions. I'm yeah. sorry, but no, they're all no. related. And the, and the short answer is no. We haven't done any additional looking at handicap. When the parking lot was done, I know we met the standards there. Okay. Whether we meet them on Woodfield in Boston, yeah. I, I don't have that answer, but I'm making the assumption we do. But we can, we can check. I can look in. And and, and and the question, the, really, the follow up to all that is, is is the minimum necessary the right answer, or is it is it a good idea to to increase those? Obviously, then you lose basis for general parking. So, but at, le at least it's worth looking into these questions. And I, and I appreciate since you're doing it to to get a little feedback on that because I know folks are concerned on both sides. Part of the reason and then. That's it for that point. But part of the reason, frankly and commendably, the reason is more pressure is the businesses right around the green are seem to be thriving. They're Restaurants well, are really busy, and yeah. I mean it's encouraging. What do you need from us today? Nothing. Just an update. Nothing. This is really just kind of an update, but you know, a couple of good ideas yeah, too to, to to look into. I just want to make you aware of a project the Economic Commission's been doing. There will be some future costs, but I, I don't think it's significant. That you know would really upset them, and then we'll fully define how we're going to pay for should we go forward with mm -hmm. some construction or sidewalk. Yeah. Yeah. Great, thank okay. you, yeah, thank, thank you. you, thank you. All right, item eight: uh, consider and discuss.
Purchase of state owned land. Uh, in your packet, you had uh, a series of uh, documents. This is a parcel on Route 1, right next to Sleepy's, mm -hmm. that uh, you see the letter I got from the state. I indicated affirmatively that we are interested. Um, I have charged land acquisition and uh, like Gary McKelney once again uh, with negotiating with the state. It's my understanding <laughs> that there is an open bid. The way the process works is there's a bid uh, that apparently of $75,000 by a private individual for it, we have the right to get it for that amount of money. Um, so uh, Gary is... What a potential use? Well, they'll look into it. Yeah, that's that's what land acquisition is taking a look at. All right, so that's um, more to follow on that. Item 9, discussion and uh, possible creation of town facilities task force. I think by your action earlier approving the 50000 um, we uh, uh, we're in agreement. So, is there a motion to create a uh, town uh, townwide facilities task force? So moved. Second. Uh, any further discussion? Call the question. All in favor? Uh, aye. Aye. Those abstain. Refuses. Hearing none. Motion carries. Uh, item ten: Consider and take possible action on uh, membership expansion of the energy task force. Uh, a change in title to the sustainable Guilford and expanded charge to include bring your own proposal. Let me take those one at a time. Uh, we have more folks uh, interested in participating. Also, because that sustainable CT initiative included nine pillars uh, and we only had seven members, people were doubling up on some of these things. So uh, it's my recommendation that we make it an unlimited membership, and that is uh, agreeable to the current members of the committee. It's good to see that reinvigorated. It was struggling yeah. for so long. All right. So. Um, is uh, I'll move the, it. yeah, it, and if we could call, if we could change the title of that task force to the Sustainable Guilford Task Force, mm -hmm. um, and then lastly, um, the presentation we had with the uh, Bring Your Own uh, Ordinance proposal, I'd like to make uh, the Sustainable Guilford Task Force the responsible party for doing the community uh, uh, research, activism, and bringing back to us a series of recommendations and interact as our agent uh, working well, towards do the committee work. Do the committee work. I'd kind of like to take the word, take the reference to the ordinance out of it, maybe, and give right. them a charge as to bring far your own, to examining, bring your own proposal. yeah, bring yeah. your own or reduction of single-use plastic yeah. or whatever. We'll just call it to bring your own. Proposal. Yeah. So, okay. so um, there was a, a, a fair amount of feedback on that topic. I just want to make sure those the committee that with their meetings, if people are interested in, in providing input, yeah. they're free to provide that input to this committee once it meets. And the meetings are advertised just like any other public meeting. Absolutely. So folks got to just keep their eyes on the schedules, right. and um, you know, I just want to make sure people have an opportunity to be heard if they do have some objection or if they're in favor of it, right. uh, or, or if they just a, have questions. This is a good way for um, uh, the government to show some commitment, but also you also had wanted some. Um, Influence from or uh, participation from um, the groups wanting it, and um, that it doesn't become a total project of the town, but the town is participating in the project. That's right. So I That's like right. the way that it's folded into this, or That's the right. suggestion mm -hmm. of it. I, I think you know, my, my terminology was something along the lines that we need to see grassroots support yes. for this thing. Yeah. We, need, mm -hmm. we need community exactly. buy in on this thing. Mm -hmm. right? All right, is there a motion to accomplish all three so of those things? A second. Second. Uh, any further discussion? Call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Recusals? Hearing none, motion carries. Item 11, um, uh, appointments and resignations. 11.1, .1, act on resignation received from Ronald Vedrani from the Veterans Advisory Board. Is there a motion? With regret. With regret and appreciation. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Recusals? Uh, hearing none, motion carries. Uh, item 11.2, act on appointment of Robin Campo to the Energy Task Force. Here we go. We're, we're sustainable now the Sustainable Gopher. Gopher. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, there's a motion and a second. Second. Uh, call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Recusals? Hearing none. Motion carries. Uh, item 11.3, remove from table and take possible action on a recommendation to appoint Richard Meyer to, uh, as an alternate to the Planning and Zoning Commission to fill a vacancy for the term to expire February 28, 2020. Is there a motion to take it off the table? I will move to take it off the table. I Second, taking it off the table. The table. Uh, as I'll, I'll start uh, further uh, discussion on what we had last time, where there were some reservations expressed about uh, uh, Mr. Meyer's appointment. Uh, I have received input, uh, unsolicited input, from several individuals, uh, both on both sides of the aisle, bipartisan, uh, registering concerns about uh, Mr. Meyer's uh, previous um, uh, service on that board. Um, and 
it. So I, I have the same reservations that were expressed earlier. Um, and yeah, um, I expressed them last time, and I since the last meeting, I also have uh, had other contacts, and uh, uh, you know we have a viable alternative at this point. So okay. I'm ready to move on. Agreed. Agreed. Great. Any other for support? All right. So we don't have to, uh, that was never. It was never a motion uh, um, to a point. It was a general discussion. Uh, therefore, we have uh, an application received from Michael Basso for the Planning and Zoning Commission as an alternate vacancy uh, for a term to expire um, February 28, 2020. Is there a motion? Uh, and a second. I'll second that. Any further discussion? No. Call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Uh, refusals? Hearing none. Motion carries. Item 12. I'm going to take all of these uh, as a single item. Gary McElney, uh, Gary McElney strikes again. Um, <laughs> there are uh, 12.1 to 12.5, respectively. Is there a motion to approve as uh, designated? So moved. Second. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none. Oh. I have a question. Okay. Uh, witness stones, in the word installation, are we installing the witness stones on the green? I didn't understand. I think they're using they 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 have the ceremony there. Okay. They bring the bandstand down, it's and the kids uh, read their essays, and then the stones are placed around uh, various community. Uh, so they're not being right. installed on the green. That was my only yeah. question. Is that this that's what is to. That's no, interesting, because the know, point is these little stones are placed yeah. randomly around town, and I thought possibly no, 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 those, <laughs> are, those are different. Oh. Those are the kindness stones. Oh, these, okay. are the, these are the ones that are permanent markers oh, I see. that say um, an African-American slave here. A slave individual lived in this okay. house. So. Oh, I see. Properties are identified where right. they were enslaved I see. folks. Okay, so they'd be on private properties, not the greatest. Yes. Well, they may be on town properties, too. They could, uh, there's one in front of town hall now. Right. Okay. It's, so... I don't, I mean, I just looked at this. It is hard to tell. I don't think they're installing them on the green. I would think not. I think he's but, having the yeah. ceremony on the green. There was already right. one of these held last spring. Mm -hmm. right. So okay. That's the kickoff. That's what they yeah. did. They did the, right. they did the ceremony. Uh, the kids read their essays. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. they distributed it and went out into the community to place that. Thing, so. okay. All right. Call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Fusils? Hearing none. Motion carries. Item 13, correspondence. Uh, I'm not sure anybody has any. Uh, I don't have anything no to add. No. Uh, committee reports, Lou? Uh, we will, uh, finishing up our report, we should be in a position to report where we are uh, next meeting. Wonderful. Or uh, sometime in October, perhaps. Or, yeah, or, or in October. There you go. I have some travel at the beginning of the month, right. so it may push over. You got it. Um, Sandy? Um, the Housing for Economic Development Plan Committee will be meeting on Tuesday, September 25th at 5 o'clock to um, accept the report from um, Karen, um, oh Pat my God. Uh, Patrick Patrick. Pat Karen Patrick Quinn, our associates uh, regarding the feasibility of uh, going forward with, with next steps for um, establishing an affordable housing unit on the Woodruff Rollwood property. Pending the outcome of that meeting and the, the um, agreement of the committee or, or lack of agreement of the committee, it, it will eventually come before this this board. Right. Okay. Wonderful. Good. Um, old business, uh, new business. I have one item, um, and I would encourage uh, other folks to, to start to think along these lines. I want to highlight uh, a town individual. Um, I last week participated, got an inv invitation to a program called I Matter. Uh, you'll see, you may have seen something about it in the Haven Register. Uh, I Matter is a project, is a, a public multimedia program that fosters empowerment by cultivating and celebrating children's self worth and thereby their well being. This campaign features portraits of local youth accompanied by their recorded I Matter statements in larger than life banners, billboards, and interactive art uh, exhibitions. Uh, it is currently uh, an exhibit in New Haven. You're going to start to see uh, the banners put up on buildings and kiosks and so forth. But the reason I, I bring this up is this is a Guilford resident who's behind this, hmm. Rob Goldman. Uh, and I was uh, thrilled to have been invited to, to this yeah, thing to see. Yeah, posters, maybe that... Uh Community info kiosk over by the rec center would be the perfect place. Exactly, exactly. So um, I will be following up with Rob. Um, so uh, and I'd be happy to share this with you folks oh, as well. Great. All right. Nice. Uh, any other new business? Okay. Uh, public forum. Anyone wishing to address the board in public forum? Hearing none. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Same. Motion carries. Appreciate it. Thank you.